Hello, and welcome to Zenith's Video Guide. I think you're going to enjoy our program. It's designed to give you quickly and simply all the information you'll need to help you get the maximum pleasure from your new VCR. To start, note the color-coded chapters on the back of the cassette sleeve. Each chapter has its own color, and that same color also appears as a color bar across the bottom of your screen to help you quickly find a specific chapter for later review. As you start viewing each chapter, the color bar for that chapter will slowly disappear until at the end of that chapter, it's entirely gone. How much of the color bar shows will tell you quickly where you are within a chapter. Now, this video program will show you how to operate your VCR, but we also recommend that you take the time to read this printed operating guide. You'll find additional information in the guide that may not be included in this video program. One other quick point. This video guide is meant to be used with several VCR models. While functions in these models are very similar, where there are differences, we'll indicate them. Well, that's it for the preliminaries. Let's get started. Before we get started, notice the clock. It's flashing because the time needs to be set. We'll do that a little later, but for now, let's at least stop it from flashing. Just press Clock Adjust once. Press Select twice. And Clock Adjust once more. Your new Zenith VCR has an automatic power-on system. Simply loading the cassette turns on the deck. To remove a cassette, even with the power off, simply press this eject button, and just like that, out comes the cassette. Your VCR's primary controls are located here, and behind this panel door is the secondary controlled group. We'll take a detailed look at these shortly, but for now, all switches should be set to the left. On the back, are the channel output selector switch, the antenna connections, the audio and video input output jacks, and a switched, unswitched AC outlet for auxiliary components such as an amplifier, tape deck, and so forth. I'll just use this little plug-in light to demonstrate how it works. In the switched position, the AC outlet supplies power to whatever's plugged into it only when the VCR is turned on. In the unswitched position, the AC outlet supplies power to whatever's plugged into it, whether the VCR is on or off. Well, so far so good. Now let's find out more about cassette playback. For cassette playback, you can operate your VCR in several ways, manually with the controls on the machine or at a distance with this convenient full function remote control. Now, if you use the remote, be sure that this switch is in the VCR position. In the TV position, this remote will operate many remote controllable Zenith TVs. Your Zenith VCR also has a nifty feature called autoplay. If you insert a cassette that doesn't have the safety tab, the deck will automatically go into the play mode and start playing a cassette. Okay, to view a cassette, turn on your TV set and tune it to channel three or four, whichever is the unused broadcast channel in your area. In this case, channel three. Then, on the back of your VCR, set the channel output selector switch to match the TV channel you've selected. Once you've set this switch, you should never have to set it again. And from now on, this switch position will determine which channel, three or four, you tune your TV to when using your VCR. Now, why don't you sit back, relax, and use the remote control? This TV video button on the remote 
has the same function as this TV video button on the VCR. When the video light is on, that means you can view a picture from a video cassette or from broadcast TV using the VCR's tuner. When it's off, that means you must use your TV's tuner to select channels and to view a picture independent of the VCR. If you don't get a picture and your TV screen looks like this, just press this TV video button once and you should get a picture immediately. The remote control can perform most VCR functions, including speed search forward, speed search reverse, and pause. By holding the pause button down, you can advance the picture continuously. To resume regular playback, press play. To lock the speed search function so you don't have to hold the button down, just press the speed search forward or reverse buttons and release it immediately. To release speed search lock, press play. When not in tape playback, you can also press the enter recall button to call up computer-like on-screen displays to tell you your VCR's current operating status. Pressing any one of the function keys, such as rewind or channel selection, will also give you on-screen displays for that function. Your new VCR has a feature called Next Function Memory, so it will remember the next function you want after you press rewind. You can use Next Function Memory with the play, eject, power, and timer functions. For example, here's how it works with eject. Press rewind and then immediately press the eject button. This flashing symbol means that the cassette will rewind to the beginning, stop, and eject the cassette automatically. If during playback your picture looks distorted, or if the audio sounds strange or is missing, use either the plus or minus electronic tracking control buttons to clear it up. During tape playback, there are several ways you can automatically search for and find a specific segment of the tape. Here's one example. You can go directly to a specific point of the tape by pressing this go to button. First, insert a cassette and press go to. Enter the tape counter number you want and press play. The VCR will rewind the cassette until it senses the beginning of the tape. It will then reset the tape counter to zero and go directly to the number you entered. Playback will begin automatically. By the way, once the VCR has referenced the beginning of the tape, it won't need to rewind the cassette again. The next time you press the go to button, it'll just fast forward or rewind to the number you entered and begin playback. Uh, one other point about go to. If after you enter the number you want, you press stop instead of play, the VCR will go to that number and then stop. Pressing clock lap counter twice restores the clock display. Well, that about wraps up this chapter. Coming up next, important information about your TV picture. For full enjoyment of your VCR, you obviously need a picture. So, in this chapter, we're going to take a brief look at where your TV signal comes from. All of us are accustomed to changing channels on the TV and seeing the channel we selected come up on the screen. That's because your TV has a tuner built in. And it's this tuner that makes it possible for us to receive a TV signal from any available channel in our area. Now, to understand how this works, think of the TV signal as water flowing through a garden hose. The signal flows in here from the antenna and into the back of the TV. Then it flows out again as a picture. 
Your VCR also has a tuner built in, so in a way, it's like a TV set, only without the screen. And like the water in your garden hose, the signal flows in here into the back of the VCR. Then the signal flows out again directly into the TV. Since the VCR's tuner works independent of the tuner in the TV, you can change from the VCR's tuner to the TV's tuner or back again anytime you want. Having two independent tuners is why it's possible to record a program on one channel while watching a second program on a different channel. Your VCR can also receive signals directly from a cable TV system or from a special cable TV signal box like this. Now, one of the things all this means is since the VCR's tuner works independent of the TV set, we don't have to have the TV turned on to record a program. That's one of the great features of having a VCR. Now that we know a little bit about where signals can come from, let's go on to the next chapter and find out how to get the ones you want into your VCR.